good, good evening. Uh, hey, uh, this is going to be the, uh, the, the sixth episode of uh, uh, Then the Bell Rang. Oh. And we're doing uh, the, the king, uh, the king of the ring, right? 94. Yeah. Yes, yes, we are, Mr. Donovan. Yes, you were there, remember? Art, Art Donovan <laughs> yes. made this show famous. It was <laughs> famously bad, but um, yeah. I'll tell you something about Art Donovan just before we get properly into this show. I saw him on the Late Show in sometime in 1997, right, with Dave Letterman, and he's the same Art Donovan on that show. He's just all over the place, and Dave Letterman's <laughs> actually he's ripping the piss out of him pretty good, <laughs> right. <laughs> the crowd start laughing at certain points and he's so not with it and he he's looking around really awkward art donovan and he's like hey did i say something bad <laughs> dave lips like hey, no. oh, God. <laughs> so someone had the bright idea of inviting art donovan um former football american football yes. player to commentate at king of the ring in 1994, Vince McMahon was otherwise preoccupied at the time, shall we say, with um, yes. legal processes. Something's not a <laughs> yeah. or feeling a deja vu. It's yeah. June 2024, and in June tw- 1994, it was King of the Ring, the second annual yes. for Baltimore, Maryland. Um, well, why are we talking about this show? I mean... It, I mean, why not? First of all, but um, <laughs> I just, you'll you'll have your own reasons. Um, mine are not just because it's thirty years this month, which mm-hmm. yes, it's a nice round number. But um, the, I would say this is the first ever pay per view that I watched as a fully fledged, committed fan. Yeah, I just basically jumped on at WrestleMania ten. Yeah. Um, and I was then watching the show every week after yeah. WrestleMania 10. So this was my first big pay-per-view that I'd led up to and had anticipation for and was aware of the storylines, and I loved it. It was a brilliant memory, um, big show for me at the time. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was a great show, and I enjoyed watching it uh, just recently in preparation for the show again. Although I didn't really need to. I remember it so well. <laughs> All the matches, all the angles, some of the stuff leading up to it. Um, I really liked it. You had Gorilla Monsoon, Randy Savage and Art Donovan on commentary. And um, on the network, unfortunately, they don't have the countdown show, which is oh, a shame because that was quite a bit of fun. Um, it's on all the VHS copies. Yeah. A lot of fun. So you don't get to see Todd Pettengill trying to entice everybody to buy the pay-per-view which was never an issue for us in the uk at that time we just got got them for free um not always live but that did come later and they were free for a long time 94 king of the ring well well it really is yeah yes i mean for me 93 and 94 were very interesting years in wrestling they weren't like uptake years they weren't like the height of wrestling, they were kind of like transitional periods for me. Um, there was stuff in 93 that I liked a lot, and there was stuff in 93 that I didn't like a lot, and it's much the same with 94. But I always maintained that 93 was better than 94, including the King of the Ring tournament. I always enjoy the original one more so than this one. And I, I can't put my finger on it. I don't know why. I didn't really enjoy 95, uh, 95 94 to begin with, to be honest. 95. I mean, yeah, you had to bring the whole tone of the show down. No, right the Ninety-five start. was worse. Yeah, I mean the the only the, I mean SummerSlam was okay, but I mean WrestleMania was probably the best event of ninety-four. But I don't know what it was. I just thought that the ideas weren't great in ninety-four. Apart from the Owen Hart and Bret Hart stuff, that was great, great TV. But everything else that they did, I was just like, 
and I, and I get they teased the Michaels and Diesel air towards the end of the year, which was again fine, but it's like the rest of the year is just like, oh, you haven't got you much. Know, what I would say about '94, looking back on it, I, I didn't maybe appreciate it at the time. I was too, um, yeah. too new to it, maybe. But they probably did struggle a little bit in terms of strength and depth of the roster. Yeah. <sighs> And I think like Sean Michaels should have worked a lot more in '94 than he did. Yes, um, he's he's out of action for he's doing his Heartbreak Hotel thing for a lot of that year. He doesn't, other than WrestleMania, I think he's he's in the ring for about two minutes at Survivor Series. Yeah, um, he doesn't really work very much. He has a match with Razor Ramon in August of '94, and he beats him. Yeah. Um, which was quite a big deal. I remember I was quite disappointed at the time because he beat yeah. Razor and loved Razor. Yeah. Um, there was a bit of that going on. I, and I get I get what you mean about 93. I mean, in terms of the the overall quality of the matches, I would say 93 is is better. Um, yeah. You had the seismic event, which was Yokozuna winning the title from Hulk Hogan. Yes. His last match in WWF for many, many years. Yeah. Um, so it was a big show, historic show. Ninety four. Well, it was really the, it was really the Owen Hart show. I um, suppose yeah. looking back yeah. on it in retrospect, but um, just going back to the to the lead up to the whole thing. So as 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 I say, I, I just I just remember. Yeah, this was my first experience of. Uh, that build up to the whole show and that, you know, the qualifying matches and the, and the draws. I can just remember the interviews as well. There were several, uh, several interviews done on, I think it was superstars where you'd have people that were in the tournament and had already been drawn against their opponent that would, they would be in the ring and you'd have people coming out, the, you know, the opponents, they'd be watching them stood on the, yeah. on the race platform. And there was, just quite well set up yeah really um I, and i can remember quite vividly there's a couple of interviews one from tatanka who was gonna wrestle owen hart <laughs> it was just so so funny but i always remember this one where he's basically saying like oh i'm gonna take you because i'm gonna beat you <laughs> yes <laughs> it was great i just well, that's, it just hooked me on wrestling um, at that time. But yeah, it took a little bit of time to get into it and fully understand it. But um, little little things like that, I just loved at the right. time leading up to it. And um, so, Roddy Piper, I can remember all of this silliness with um, Jerry Lawler and just all the all the crap going on on the yeah. on the King's Court, and he's got that kid out from the crowd who's doing an impression of Roddy Piper and trying to mock yeah. him. <laughs> so, look at these arms. Yeah. They look like mosquito bites on a strand of spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and if I remember he uh I think he, he brings the kid with him to the pay per view and Jerry's like like typical bad guy fashion, like frowns upon it. It's like, what's that kid doing here? I paid him to be, you know, on my show and stuff like that. It's just like I remember the build up to that match was better than the actual match because watching that match was very hard. It was <laughs> it was a precursor for what WCW became in like nineteen nine, two thousand, where the two old guys were just terrible i mean yeah look i i watched it very recently then and, <laughs> and um it doesn't get any easier with the passage of time now it's 30 years right. it was tough wasn't it i think what they maybe they i don't know if this was intentional or not from roddy piper but um gorilla monsoon and um, randy savage were making a point of the fact that Roddy Piper hadn't wrestled in two years at this point, therefore he was just ancient and yeah. probably all his joints seized up with rust and can he go? He, wasn't <laughs> he looked in great shape. But yeah. he, he sort of comes across almost like Superman in the ring, but he's lost all his powers and he's just getting beat up and it's like, yeah. wow, he's this tremendous figure in the ring that's, that's being ravaged and we don't, we've not seen this before and this is really bad and Jerry Lawler um, super cocky and arrogant and you know doing what Jerry Lawler does best um, so many outrageous things he says like he, he, there's a spot where Piper's um, it must have been on All American Wrestling he had a little spot on All 
American where he'd sometimes do interviews taped from his house yeah, yeah, yeah. up in Oregon. Yeah. And um, he's talking, he's sat next to his, his piano and he's saying, you called a bunch of sick kids in the hospital up in t- t- Toronto. You go there and you call them brats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, so obviously Piper's going to donate a portion of his winnings to the hospital if he wins yes. the match. And uh, that was that was a great little angle. Um, what, what I don't really understand, and it's, it's a little bit of an arbitrary feud because, as I say, Piper's off the scene. He's not really in anybody's face. Um, maybe there's a little hint of it in the main event at WrestleMania 10 when he's the guest referee. Piper does make a point and say, I hate this guy. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. there was a little um, spark then, I guess, but um, it seemed to me like a slightly arbitrary feud, but it was funny. Yeah. It was a funny one. And it's, it also, it, I think another though. mistake here is it finishes the show. It's last. It does. And it's a if you're on last, yeah. yeah, if you're on last, you you better make sure you have and it was by a long way the worst of the night yes it was awful um but maybe we should go back to the beginning of like the the king of the ring started with razor and bam bam bigelow which uh so the tournament itself yes yeah yeah and bam 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 was a finalist in last year's king of the ring against the hitman where you know everyone thought bam bam had won it after luna interfered but like the ref started again and the hitman won it with a victory roll but yeah this time Bam Bam had a had a buy and i think um yes it's one of the most easily predictable things in the king of the ring tournament uh probably even now if you've got a big guy in there and he needs to get to the final he's gonna yes. get a buy because he can't work three times yes can't yeah. do it because he'll just be blown out if blown out enough already yeah um, into the final so yeah he has a really solid match with with razor and razor gets in some really great um sort of high impact moves um the finish is brilliant i love the finish of this match yeah um he's, he's up there on the turnbuckle bam bam for the moonsault and razor gets up and he's just kind of grabs him by the back in the stomach and he just kind of launches him through the air and he <laughs> smashes bam bam down to the canvas and pins him yeah, and Luna for shorts head. wearing like this really um, <laughs> kind of very sexual outfit the whole time, and she's screaming and shouting. And you got old Art Donovan mumbling like, well, "What's this girl? What's that girl uh, screaming about over there?" <laughs> and at one point, Gorilla <laughs> Monsoon, bless him, he's like, "Well, that's well, that's uh, that that's." That's his second. Man. And uh, yeah. she wants to see Bam Bam progress to, to the finals of the King of the Ring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, I see. Now I get it. Okay. <laughs> and Randy said, oh, you and get like, it now, Who's DR, this guy, Gorilla? <laughs> yes. How much, How much does this, this guy, guy weigh, Randy? <laughs> <laughs> I probably paid more attention to it because I'm more aware of it now. But yes. um, honestly, at the time, I didn't think too much of it. I thought, okay. Um, the novelty here is that you've got someone who's not a wrestler, who's not in, into wrestling, who's sat in that chair and is having a good time. And therefore, if you're not a wrestling fan, maybe you could have a good time as well. Maybe you could get into it. Yeah. Um, yeah in the I same way that Art Donovan's obviously enjoying wrestling. But <laughs> I guess so. I mean, at the time, at the time, I hated it. But it is, I, I, every time I watch it, I can't, I cringe at his commentary. But I mean, again, he, he was obviously you know there what? for a reason. Do you know what? I, with that excuse, says, you know, what I, I could be as a, as a sort of part time job, separate job. I could be Bruce Pritchard's apologist. Yeah, <laughs> I could do it. You could. I could come up with bullshit excuses and you could. be his apologist. Excellent. That would be a good way to earn some extra cash. <laughs> so. Oh man! But um, yeah, the next match is IRS. I'm not B- blaming him for that, by the way. So, no, that's that's ultimately that's Vince's fault, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> The next match is IRS beating Mabel, which was a shock because Mabel was a big guy in IRS again. I mean, doesn't Mabel miss like a big move, a big splash or something, and the IRS just pins him and he just like tries to get out but can't. <laughs> it's it's like... worth watching it just to watch Mabel um, <laughs> like a jelly yeah. trying to kick out yeah. of this move. IRS has got his yeah. foot on the ropes, but it's just hilarious watching Mabel try and kick out. 
Who's this, who's this it was guy? Was so surprised to be even then being <laughs> yes. as, as raw to wrestling as I was. Yeah. I just thought this guy can't move. He's rubbish. He, he, he Mabel Visser, what do you want to call him? Yeah, he was rubbish. He was. He got, he got beat all the time in 94. <laughs> I can't remember him winning a match other than by DQ at the WrestleMania oh, um, yeah. in a tag match. But yeah, he was just awful. And IRS going through was was the right decision because him versus yeah. Razor was a much better match than that would have been. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. But I mean, <laughs> the whole men on a mission gimmick was terrible in my opinion. <laughs> but um oh god i think they really tried to push the whole rap thing with those they guys did. i think they if you did. were at a live show maybe it would have been i think it probably it probably right, get fun at the show physically yeah. at the show but on the but, screen yeah, they, they were just yeah shocking. <laughs> shocking in the ring yes well we'll move swiftly on to the next match which was owen hart against the tonka which wasn't a bad match to be fair oh it's a, it's a really solid match um yeah really hard for both of them they work really hard and um in the end it's a quick snatched win from yeah. Owen with a clever um kind of roll up counter attack yeah move you know he goes for it's it's almost the in fact it's it's a little bit like the um bulldog brett finish at SummerSlam 92 he just kind of hooks his legs he's yeah trying to set him up and he yeah it's, it's a decent finish Tatonka is more surprised that he'd yes. lost in that way. He wasn't outclassed or just obviously beaten. He just got beaten in a quick, quick move. Move, you know. It was just a, it was a chancey win from Owen, but it was hard fought, and it, it had gone probably around about ten minutes. Yeah, the match it's a decent match, um, good quality, and it helped set up that story for Owen's night. Yes, really. yeah. And again, Tatonka was a good worker. So, I mean, again, I was a big fan of Tatonka. I always maintained he, he, he would have made it. In. He, you know, yeah. he, most of his stuff is a good match. Yeah. And it made he it. He wears down, Owen, at yeah. time. Yeah. It, 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 I guess, I don't know if they, I think they were trying to portray Owen as an underdog, but as a, as a bad guy underdog, because I think nobody thought Owen Hart could win the tournament. No one thought he could, they could do what his brother did the year before. So, um, I think they set the storyline up quite nicely for him. I don't know. I mean, they were they were pushing, or he was pushing himself really hard with his promos leading up to it because he was basically he came across as a guy that was just so um, obsessed by yeah. winning it, and it was it was all about um, his hatred of his brother Brett more than yes. anything, um, and it comes across as quite vile at times and. Um, you know, really, really intense. Yeah, yeah. Really intense. But you, know, you can just see this is a guy that everything he does from the minute he wakes up to the, to when he goes to sleep, every aspect of his day is about um, how he can destroy his brother, Brett. Yes. <laughs> and, really yes. Like, you know, and that's, that's how he was, he was doing all these things. And um, it was very believable. And I think with, with brother rivalries, anyone that's got siblings will understand is um it's relatable to a lot of people has been said before yeah um from brett and and owen i think before he died but um it's an easily understandable story yeah and because you know they're really British, you just think well you know this is this is something yeah definitely um it was believable definitely so you Moving on to the last quarterfinal. Oh, yes. Which was the kid and Jeff Jarrett. Which... Uh, one, two, three, kid. Oh, who's this guy? Uh, what, who's he? Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> Isn't How this much weird? does this guy weigh? He looks like a boxer. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah. He looks like a boxer. <laughs> oh, that's the one, two, three kid. But yeah, I mean... um. This is the match where he beats Jarrett, and Jarrett then like piles up, dries him like five times after the match, beats the shit out yeah. of the kid. It's a pretty good match actually, because what I think they did well with Sean Waltman at the time was he was not a very big wrestler, mm. but he was quick and he had some yeah, a few martial arts good skills. Moves, yeah. Yeah. Um, he had some great moves, and he was a one hell of a high flyer. He, he actually, for me, he, my favorite year of his 
is actually 94 in terms of his in-ring work because yeah, he was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's that great uh, match with the Hitman as well. And oh boy. yeah, that's that's definitely worth checking out. I think that whole match is on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, and it's worth it. It's a brilliant, match. great story. Um, so Jeff Jarrett bosses most of this match. Yeah, probably two thirds of it at least. He's just manhandling the kid, and he's throwing him around, and he just looks like a little again, little rag doll. Um. And just overconfidence, arrogance from Double J taking too much time, being yeah. an ass. He gets a, gets what he's owed. He gets pinned. Yeah. You know, he's going for the figure four, and I think he just grabs his Goldilocks and yes. um, pins him. <laughs> Perfect pin combination. Yeah. yeah, he just loses it, doesn't he? And yeah, he does a number on the kid, and he's helped out by the referees. You think, oh, wow. We'll probably He's never done. see him again. He's done. We're we'll seeing that guy again. It's like, oh Christ! Yeah, I think they just set it up again for the for the semi final match to make like a weaker opponent for Owen. But um, we'll get to that one. So I thought it was a good one, just in terms of obviously you've got a heel that's on route to the final. Yeah, um, you're going to make the heel as strong and as dastardly as you can, and you've got you've got the one two three kid. Who's been beaten up, up yeah. coming by the face, but he's also a major underdog. So um you're actually doing both of them a lot of good. Yeah. In telling the story that way. So I'm told that production time was was a little bit um tight and for the semi final match, um there wasn't a lot of time. They had to basically I think they wrestled it's barely six minutes this match. So and both, the kid. both agreed that they would just get all of their stuff in and it would just be a really high pace match. And, you know, the actual uh, start of the match is, is brilliant because, you know, he gets a lot of praise when he finally hobbles down the ring and they're like, yeah. oh, outstanding, I'm standing, what a man. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, the cameraman stood behind the kid as he's about to climb up onto the ring apron and Owen out of nowhere. And you can hardly see him because it's quite dark. Yes. Yeah, yeah. With all the. Uh, um, he drop kicks him what looks, it looks like clean in the face. Yeah. <laughs> Tumbling. Yeah. <laughs> it's really shocking. Um, brutal start to the match. Yeah, I remember that. I mean, the it does, kid. does get a brilliant sort of. Um, it's like a. Um, well, uh, the rope saves Owen, but the kid gets a pin on him. He does yeah. count three, um, but he escapes in the ropes. And um, yeah, ultimately, after six minutes of some unbelievable moves, um, a great match. Owen does beat him clean in the sharpshooter, and it is a clean yes. win. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say they, they they set the kid up, and he he actually pulls off a few. You know, he, it looks like he could win the match. Like they pull it like out of the bag, and then obviously Owen kicks out and. Not to be in the end, but yeah, it was it was a pretty well set up match that one. He so. does get a little bit of a consolation hollow win. Um, the kid a, a couple of months later, just before SummerSlam, about two weeks out, hmm. um, he gets a disqualification win against Owen on Raw, yeah. and he's got him in. He's basically got him in a Boston Crab, and Owen's not getting out of it. And not in Jim Neidhart, um, spoiler, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Jim Neidhart comes in and they do a number on the kid on Raw, but he does actually get a win on Raw oh, okay. a couple of months later after losing clean in the, in the um, semi-finals. Yeah. But the, the second semi-final was Razor against Irwin, Mr. Shyster, which uh, Razor wins that match. It was pre- again, a pretty decent match. Um, much better than the 94 Rumble match, I thought. <laughs> yeah. Um they're both decent, actually. I think those matches, but uh, what I liked was just the start of it, just the look of Razor's face yeah. when you can hear IRS just talking tax trash over the mic, and <laughs> yes. he's just not interested. He just wants to <laughs> punch his lights out, um, yeah. and they sell that quite well. And he dispatches him pretty efficiently. Yes, then he beats him clean in his finish. He gets him up in the Razor's edge, and the crowd loved that. So he beat Bam Bam with a brilliant move in the quarterfinals and he beats IRS with his finish. And you're thinking, wow, you know, he's, he raises in the final um, yeah. a couple of months out or barely 
barely a month or, or two out from losing the Intercontinental belt to Diesel. Yeah. And he's now got himself into the final. Yeah. They, and like they, Randy Savage said, he's uh, probably thinking that uh, winning the King of the Ring might just soothe that ego just a touch. <laughs> I mean, they set up Razor. I mean, again, they made it. They looked. They made Razor look strong um, to think that oh, Razor's going to win this. You know, he's going to beat Owen Hart in the final. I think they again they set the tournament up nicely because I know I remember when I watched it first time. I was like, oh, Razor's going to win this. I was not even thinking that Owen's going to win it. I was like, no, Ray, they're setting out for Razor. But obviously, uh, you know, it was wrong. But um, <laughs> we we move we on to. Yeah, there's a couple other matches we should talk about. I think. Yeah, I was going to uh, say there's title match and the tag title match. Yeah, so we'll do the why don't we, we'll do the title match. Yes. Um, which actually happened between the quarters and the semi-finals at, at this point. Yeah. Um, so we're slightly jumping around a bit, but that's okay. Um, so again, I, as I say, WrestleMania 10 got me into wrestling properly. And I was on board with it, and yeah, I thought Brett was just the best. Yeah. And still do. Yeah. Um, so he had this match with Diesel, who was who had just recently beat Razor Ramon for the Intercontinental Belt, and it was only his title on the line, not Diesel's. And again, I'm still learning my trade at this point in terms of being a wrestling fan. I'm still trying to figure it all out, and yeah. I'm watching superstars. I'm watching All American on Sundays. I'm, oh. uh, I'm watching Mania. Um, wrestling challenge I can remember talking to you a lot about this at school at the time and I can remember thinking I really want Brett to, to win I want him to beat Diesel but I yeah. watched it all in some what I now know it would be squash matches yeah. against robbers <laughs> the guy was like seven feet tall and he's just demolishing these guys yeah. to make just look like a great white shark in the ring and just annihilating these guys and they just look like little flies against him and yeah. I can I can vividly remember saying to you one morning I really hope he wins but I saw Diesel at the weekend and I just don't know how anyone could stop him I, I, he was unbelievable yeah um it's a wrecking machine like, yeah. there's, I can't see a chance <laughs> which is funny now when I look back but it's, it's the way really, they set him up. I mean, it's the way they they, they portrayed Diesel as a killer. So I think that's what why you were so concerned at the time because it was just like they they did a good job in feeding him like baby you know jobbers and stuff. And you're like, oh my god, Brett doesn't stand a chance if he gets power bombed and stuff like that. I mean, well, I, th- I think Yokozuna started out like that a little bit too. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he came in late '92 and yeah. he didn't properly get over, I would argue, until the Royal Rumble when he won it. Yeah, um, and you're right. The, the more you feed someone like that who has a really great look and gets great reaction from the crowd, um, they're going to come across a lot more believable. So, uh, th- I think probably the key event slash incident that led up to the match was on the King's Court. So Jerry Lawler's talking a lot of trash to Brett, and you're thinking Brett's about to knock him out, but yeah. then he invites Shawn Michaels and Diesel to the ring, so you've got three-on-one situation, and there's basically, long story short, a sucker punch, and yeah. um, Diesel cheap shots him and jackknifes Brett, yeah. and um, then they all start sort of pummeling him and kicking and punching and all the rest of it, so Brett's had a number done on him before the match anyway, and yeah, Shawn Michaels is a classic son-of-a-bitch heel. Yeah. <laughs> He really is. Like he, he's just the shit stirrer of all things. Oh, back then he was he was the worst. Back then he was just yeah. <laughs> it was, oh, oh, he was a shit there's a couple of little spots I'll talk about in the match itself, but yeah, um, yeah. So I'm really I'm really super excited for this match, and I can remember it was it was like nearly half an hour um, the yeah. whole title match, and it was brilliant match. Um, it's the first of three big encounters that they that they had over the next year or so yeah um, and it's epic and because obviously Shawn Michaels is out there Brett has an insurance policy which he unveils to be Jim the Anvil Neidhart who comes down to the ring oh, and, foundation days yeah yeah I know and yeah Randy Savage and Gorilla love it because they're like oh he can take care of Shawn Michaels absolutely what a great choice and this is yeah. brilliant 
yeah. little did we know. <laughs> but, I know. Um, I, I remember when you told me what happened the night before being confused because you were like, oh, Jim Neidhart returned with Brett. And I was like, oh, great. And then at the end of it, you were telling me what happened. I was like, well, what happened? <laughs> I was so confused. I was like, oh, but yeah, no, it's, it's, that's right. Because I would have watched it as a taped show on Sky Sports. I, maybe you didn't have it at that no, exact time. I, I can't remember that. No, I think you lent me the tape. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. We used to do that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but it was the first time I heard Brett's new music as champion. Yes. So yeah. Electric yeah. guitar version, which he was on new one for seven years. And I thought that again, like, I wasn't expecting that when it came out to the ring. It just looked like super cool. Yeah. And that, that was awesome theme song. And yeah, he made a hell of an impact actually at the time. And I thought, geez, this is, this is big. This big is really time. big huge time. match and i was i can remember being so pumped at the time and it doesn't disappoint it's it's a brilliant um paced match diesel's kevin nash is he's not he's not that experienced at this point and he's, no. he's still got a lot to learn um and there are when i look back on it, i think there are some some points where he's actually blown up a bit in the match um <laughs> There's a bit where Brett tries to sort of Irish whip him across the ring and he just sort of gives up and starts walking halfway across the <laughs> ring. So, yeah. so Brett just follows yeah. up and improvises with something else. And, yes. Um, but for the most part, he did quite well. But there are some points in it that actually he's legitimately gassed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's struggling. Um, so many, yeah, so many great little moments in the match. So you've got Jim Neidhart and Shawn Michaels playing cat and ass outside yeah. and Art Donovan's just basically beside himself in the whole match he's like he's killing this guy yes. how's he, how's he, how is he going to get out of bed tomorrow how do you guys do this <laughs> I was like, you roll out of bed Art Donovan whatever you have to do if it takes you a couple of extra days that's what you do <laughs> and then he starts mumbling again and Gorilla's like uh, I didn't hear you uh, Art uh, I'm sorry <laughs> Yeah, he's. I think at the one stage at the beginning, I think he announces him as Art O'Donnell or something. I don't like Gorilla, that's not his name. But anyway, even Gorilla was like, I don't know what this guy's doing here. I just got told he's going to be commentating yeah. with us. But yeah, Gorilla's just like, ah, you deal with him, Randy. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, oh, God. There's a couple of, when there's some some big spots that are set up, and there's one in particular when um, they take, Shawn Michaels takes the protective padding off the turnbuckle. Yeah, and um, he sets it up, distracts the referee, so that Diesel can just basically pick up Brett and drop his face on on the exposed steel turnbuckle, yeah. and Brett um, blocks it, gets out of the way, and he just kind of shoves Diesel's um, into stomach right into the turnbuckle, and yeah. um, Art Donovan just goes beside himself. He's kind of like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and Diesel makes Diesel sells it as well because you really hear him go. Arr! Into the into the buckle, you're like, oh Christ! Yeah, he was so, good at grinding and stuff. I mean, I think he was legit, um, yeah exhausted, and you, you could see he was just gassed. Very. He never quickly. had a long match with anyone before, Brett. To be fair. Yeah, this it was, was a big, first I think long, a big long thing. match. Yeah, for him, really big thing. I mean, uh, it was probably the match he, of his life at the time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they they do that whole. David versus Goliath um, storytelling really well. You know, right at the start of the match, you've got Diesel, um, and it's just like trading punches in the corner. Brett's hanging there for a little while, but he ultimately just can't sustain that, and he, he gets you know battered a bit, and then he starts working the working the the knee and um, sort of the technical and scientific side comes through, and it's just well told through. Gorilla Monsoon and Randy, and um, just so many great spots in the match. The crowd are really into it as well. Yeah. It's a great match. It and is. Um, Shawn Michaels, um, he does interfere a couple of times, but the first one, so Brett's got Diesel, he's about to put him in the sharpshoot. He's literally about to turn him over, and it looks like he's going to do it as well. Yeah. And then Shawn Michaels is up on the ring apron, so Brett just decides, okay, I'm going to have to. Tr- I'm gonna have to let this go. Go over and knock out Shawn Michaels. So he punches him, yeah, and he goes flying. And Shawn Michaels does a great job selling it. Like he, um, yeah, his face just smashes into the barrier. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was such a great spot, and the match continues. And I think um, they have a series of matches. This, this one, the first of three, 
and at the end of all the matches there's complaints about certain run-ins yeah and in this match um i would say that's the first big moment because brett looks to have the match possibly won and then yeah. Shawn michaels gets involved and he later gets involved again and um hits the hitman over the back of the head with the championship belt and then diesel shortly after that jack knives him and you know neidhart has to interfere and end the match and it's a dq for diesel then neidhart yeah. like a, a crazy horse like, <laughs> starts shouting everywhere and just leaves the ring area and lets lets diesel sean just batter the shit out of brett yes yeah even even lane basically yeah I remember, I remember the segment where the hitman's like searching the arena for, where's Nido? Where is he? <laughs> it's like, it's getting, Jesus Christ. He's getting to sign. Yes. Um, and, uh, yeah. Little do we know he'll return a bit later on. But, um, yeah. I mean, it was a good match. Um, the finish I thought it was, was great, bit... actually. Watching it again, I thought it was the best match on the card. At the... Definitely on the yeah. card, yeah. yeah. Um, but I think it's probably... I mean, the Royal Rumble 95 match was pretty good, but then they had too much interference in that as well. And then the Survivor Series 95 match was probably their best match that they have together. Um, yeah, they're all quite different matches, I yeah. would say. Yeah. Um, I enjoy I enjoy this first one more as a contest. Okay. Actually, um, yeah, I, I've got the same feeling about the Royal Rumble one. Um Survivor Series was just a really different kind of match. Yeah. Um, it, it probably was the best one. But they're they're all a little bit different. I mean I think that's um yeah. that was the one where there was no interference Survivor same Series. Old story. Yeah. So at the end of it when it's all over there's a bit where Shawn Michaels is holding Brett like open and exposed so the teeth would just like maul him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, as I say, Shawn Michaels is like the biggest heel of all time in this match because he um, he just kind of throws the Hitman heart down onto the canvas like all limp, yeah, like a piece of garbage. Yeah, so, like, I can remember at the time thinking, I really want to kill this guy. <laughs> I mean, he's he a great his, heel. Yeah, he did his job well, and I mean, at the time there was no there was no like personal feelings to, with Shawn and Brett, so they just kind of no, you not, know not. Really, you know, I don't think so. Like you say, it was professional, and um, yeah, yeah. I'm saying now, you know, obviously I wanted to kill him at the time. Yeah, yeah, well, obviously, but, but of the, I'm, I'm also saying he was a great heel. He was doing his job. Yeah, yeah. He, he was brilliant. Um, so was Diesel that night. So when it's all over, that they, they just kind of leave the hitman um, rolling around in the ring, and he's just kind of sat up, disappointed that he's lost by DQ, disappointed that he's been betrayed by his brother-in-law Jim Neidhart yeah. who was there to watch his back and and um oh, I'm trying to remember who the who was the the ring announcer that was the stand-in for Howard Finkel at that time God, I think it was like Bill somebody I know who you mean but yeah Bill Dunn Bill Dunn or something like that Bill yeah I think so yeah I can just remember he um he waits a little bit and then I can remember that second announcement he's already announced that um these was one by DQ and then ladies and gentlemen, as you know, yeah, <laughs> the only way to win a world wrestling federation title is by pinfall or submission. Still <laughs> World Wrestling Federation champion. Yeah, sorry, you remember that. He he wasn't they, the best ring announcer. Music, I'm like, we well, just lost Alec Payne's music. It's like, yeah, but still much. Yeah. So yeah, that was that was a thrill because it was the first main event that I'd been a part of the build up to and watching it as a fan, and uh, yeah, it was brilliant. It didn't it didn't um, disappoint. Been, at the no, time. okay, not really. good. Excellent. And I mean the next so match. Go to, yeah. Should we next. do the tag? Might as well do the tag match. Yeah, the head shrink is. Versus crushing Yokozuna. I mean, again, you for the titles, yeah. head shrinkers. What do you think? Tag teams? The Mounties, I suppose, and who were who were then basically well, Beckers, yeah. you know, no more. <laughs> they left. Yeah. We'll talk more about them another day. I should think the Mounties. They were great, but um, yeah, you've got crushing Yokozuna. I thought slightly unlikely 
team. team. But this yeah. is at a point where Yoko's putting on too much weight and he can't he can't perform on the road like he needs to. So they put him in tags so he doesn't have to yeah, work as hard. Yeah, carry the load. Uh, protect him a little bit and you know, hopefully he can lose some weight at this time, which obviously never did no. happen. And uh head shrinkers Again, brilliant spots. You know they'll, they'll do these brilliant little manoeuvres where I don't know one of them will get smashed in the face and Crush will turn <laughs> yeah. back. Yoko will turn his back, thinking, "Oh, I've just taken his head off." I was yeah. going to show the crowd how pleased I am with myself, but lo and behold, um, they've got pretty thick heads. <laughs> and it didn't yeah. phase them. And just lots of um, lots of little you know spots like that, I guess. And the match ends in disappointment for Yoko and Crush they get beat. Um solid head shrinkers. You've got Captain Lou Albano out there who was who was great and offer. Alpha. Alpha and Seeker, yeah. <laughs> Alpha. So Lex yeah. Luger had this feud with Crush at the time because Crush cost him qualification to the King of the Ring tournament. And yeah. then Lex reciprocated and screwed him in a lumberjack match. Yeah. So they didn't like each other very much and Lex Luger needed an angle, he needed something to do after basically uh, pissing it all up the wall at WrestleMania 10. <laughs> One way or another. He got screwed by Mr. Perfect, damn it. Yeah. Well, that was supposed to be the next hot angle between those two, but Mr. Perfect disappeared, didn't he? So that one he did. Uh, did. kind of fizzled out. Stopped before it started. Really, yeah. Which is a bit, and it would have been a good angle. Would have been. Yeah, I mean, I they could have done Mr. Perfect in '94. Actually, I think he would have been just that little bit of extra uh, meat on that card that you know could have just elevated the the company just a little bit higher. I think um, in terms of strength and depth, and someone that could go. And unfortunately, he had his injuries at the time. But um, yeah, yeah. So there's there's quite a funny run in um, after it's all over. Crush and Luger just go at it after the bells rang and. It, okay turns out you've got you've got crush on the outside and he's you know, he really should run off at this point but he does actually in fairness you know rush the ring and tries to attack luca and they all yeah. just beat the crap out of him and <laughs> a little bit of a well a schmoz finish we really yeah. wasn't much, much no i, I did they... like the head trickers but um yeah, it was probably a match that wasn't needed on the card, I would argue. I would have thought so, yeah. I mean, again, I, I think <sighs> Crush was, for me, someone who, like, in 92 and 93, he was like, they pushing him and pushing him as this big baby face. He had the look. Okay, maybe he couldn't work as well as they wanted him to, but, you know, they gave him move sets and... And then obviously he had the Yokozuna, at, you know, attack him and put him out. And then they did the whole angle way, turned against Randy and turned him heel and that. And I, I guess they were kind of thinking that he worked better as a heel. But I mean, I don't know. Crush was one of those guys for me that was like, he had so much potential, but never really managed to, never really managed to show that potential in a way, if that makes sense. Every time he was there, he was like, he was okay-ish, but it was like, he could have done more, but I don't know. It was a strange one. The difference crush. between face crush and heel crush was night and day. Yeah. Uh, if you were going with heel crush, then I would have been putting him with people like Randy and Perfect and probably Brett, people that could get the best out of him in the ring and teach him. Yeah. Um, if he was that sort of caliber wrestler that could go on from there. Uh, I don't think he really had a lot of chances like that. No, no. Which was a shame, because I mean, I, I really liked what he did, but, you know, I guess he's one of those what what would have been, you know, what would be guys who just didn't quite make it. And he, he did okay, but he, he, I just felt he could have been like a... Underachieved, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Possibly. But sometimes it can feel like that, but actually when it can, comes right down to it, maybe they just didn't have it on the mic or they weren't good yeah. enough in the ring or they just didn't quite have that it factor or the spark or what. Yeah, there's lots of little things that could maybe spoil that, but um, for whatever reason with Crush, yeah, didn't, he probably didn't quite reach the heights he should have done. Um, maybe maybe he was better in the... Um, Oh, what's the biker gang he was in in 97? Disciples, um, of, Disciples of Apocalypse. Disciples of Apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. In that. 
He was again, but I mean, again, he he left and he left the WCW and ended up being a free man group instead for a long time. It was like, well, that's just diluted the the group. But yeah, I mean, again, he was in the Nation of Domination, which didn't really suit him as a for a gimmick. But when he hated the whole thing, yeah, yeah. all of it. Hated. I so, really like Ron Simmons, but not in WWE. Oh, yeah. WWF. Ron Simmons did some good stuff when he joined like the APA, but that was in like after you'd finished watching it, you would have liked that. Um the right. APA stuff. Um because they were like I him and him and face. And, yeah. I would have face and given him a run, seeing what he could do. But anyway, yeah. We digress. But yeah. Let's go let's go back to the final. Yeah, the big one. Heart and Razor, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As as final matches go, um, I would say this is nowhere near as good a final match as the previous year with Bam Bam and Brett. That match was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, this is a decent, solid match in the final. Doesn't go long enough for me. I think it should have gone longer before um, the finish to yeah. it. Razor yeah. gets a fair bit of his stuff in, some high-impact moves. He starts off really well. He basically just smashes Owen Hart in the face, yeah. goes yeah. down hard. Um, off the ropes and he sort of has to backpedal a little bit and complains to the ref but you're thinking well okay great start for Ray's a solid start yeah um, and they're both I mean even Gorilla's got the presence of mind to sort of you know comment on that uh, the fact that they're not going for the pins quickly enough yeah. because they're tired and you know the, which is all good legitimizing of the of the um sport and the athletes and it's good commentary it's good storytelling it's making it seem like it's a, le- a legit fight and i always like that when when commentators or wrestlers take it really seriously and it comes across in the storytelling because it becomes more believable yeah but that's that's just me there's a lot of fans that don't think like that that's <laughs> fine yeah, I've, I've always that. enjoyed the, the big matches in that time in particular where it was, you know, the promos were handled in such a serious way. It was like, okay, this this is a fight. This is a proper main event. It's comparable with boxing in terms of, you know, the magnitude of it in the big matches. Now, this is new generation, so a fair bit of what was in between was goofy cartoon shit. <laughs> Let's face it. Um, yeah. But I would say not here. This is this is still a good match in the final. Um, yeah, Razor, he's looking really good. You think he's maybe about to get Owen Hart in the Razor's edge. And it's just one of those moments when he signals for it. You just think he's not quite worn down enough. You just know that Owen's not finished yet. He's and right it could be dangerous to go for it here, especially yeah. when you just deliberately stand right by the rope so that you can yeah. be tumbled out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is terrible. You're thinking, well, if, even if he did get him up in the razor's edge, you'd have to throw him literally out of the ring. Is he going to do he that? Would. That made no sense at all, yeah. It was a no. weird setup for it. You were like, you could we see could see, see that. Com- yes, yeah. So um, he takes a really good tumble razor outside of the ring and he, he lands pretty hard and he does a good job of kind of selling it. Selling yeah. his knee at the time, um, and he's not actually stirring. He's not really getting up. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Jim Neidhart just runs down, yeah, to ringside. You think he's going to help him? Help him up and yeah. <laughs> Razor close lines him hard, picks yeah. him up the air, and just rams him into the steel post. All all this time, Owen's distracting the referee because he's the little shit. Yeah, he was. <laughs> And he knew how to do those things. Classic heels, classic storytelling, dumps him back in the ring. And and then uh, it's not picked up on commentary, but Owen goes for the Randy Savage elbow finish and he gets the pin. Yes. Yeah. And it's not yeah. even acknowledged. No, no. I mean, I think they're more, I think they're more dis- sat right there. Yeah. I think they're more disgusted by Neidhart coming down and helping him. I think that's probably what they did, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't picked up. It's like, wow. Well, I, mean, I only pick that up now watching it back. Yeah. I look at that now and say, well, he's just taking your finish and walking the ring with it right in front of you. <laughs> so he did not comment. It seems a bit strange, but you're right. It was all about Neidhart and like, just the shock of, oh my God, what just happened? Yeah. And then um, 
they have the coronation. And then they both do a number and they do some old heart foundation moves as well. They do the heart attack, they yeah. Razor and they you know they do a real number on Razor after the match, real cheap shots. And actually any other time I think that probably would have been the start of a feud. Yeah. <laughs> um but obviously they both had to go their separate ways at SummerSlam with their opponents. Um so that was kind of a Pearl Harbor job that went largely unanswered, I think, from Razor Ramon, Scott Hall's perspective. Yeah. But that was just the night, that was how it was. And um the coronation ceremony is funny just to watch Owen Hart treat Todd Pettengill like a dog and tell him to get down on his knees and <laughs> bow to the king and proclaims to the world he's gonna be known as the King of Hearts from now on. And yeah. It's all about again, even in that moment, it's all about trying to destroy Brett and yeah. brilliantly told story. And then you've got Ray Rougeau backstage not long after that. He basically says, No, I'm not condoning the way that Owen has gone out and accomplished his mission, <laughs> but he did what you did last year, and he is now the undisputed king of the ring. What are your thoughts? <laughs> I can't believe it just happened. I don't have any comment. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Crazy. I mean, yeah. it, it, this is this is a special time actually with King of the Ring because I think whether it was long term ever the plan for it, so they did stick around with King of the Ring for several years. But yes. in the early days, I would argue the winner would usually be given a title push, if not won the title soon yes. after. So Brett. Yeah. He didn't get his push straight away. He was distracted by Jerry Lawler, but eventually obviously yeah. went on to win the title. Yeah. Then Owen is immediately in the title picture again as number one contender because he's won King of the Ring. He's already beaten Brett earlier that year before yeah. he was the champion. So it was a show that if you were in the tournament and you did well, it would uh, help you be pushed that one step further or at least closer to the ultimate goal. Yeah. Um, so it was quite a meaningful pay per view and tournament in those days. Definitely. It did it did wonders for Austin, although maybe maybe he needed a little bit longer before he properly got over. But um, yeah, ultimately it did a lot for him. He, Three sixteen was born that night. And there are exceptions. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mabel in the next year. Uh, yeah. Somehow <laughs> Maple wins it. Um, yes. Sylvia Vega wins three matches on the night and somehow still doesn't become king of the ring because he has to wrestle four, which is really unfair. Uh, yeah. Having his qualifier on the night. Yeah. Uh, and he didn't go anywhere. So there's always exceptions to the rule. And ultimately, I think that king of the ring tournament was maybe dropped, I, I think, because it wasn't the way they wanted to build wrestlers in terms of those top storylines. I think there was other ways of doing it. They didn't want to make it too obvious that this was going to lead to a upcoming program of matches because they'd won and I don't know yeah it's a strange tournament as well because they drop it and then they bring it back and then they drop it and then they bring it back and it's like okay well make your mind up this is either prestige because I mean again they recently brought back the king of the ring but they do king and queen of the ring now so um which is fine but it's just like where do those people go they get a title shot at the next pay-per-view okay but do they win it I don't know possibly I mean, they are trying to build it back up again, but yeah, I do those early King of the Rings. The first two were the were one of the best, then obviously Austin won it. Um, I think they had like in '98, Ken Shamrock won it. Won it. And it's like, oh, okay. He didn't really do I much. Think with those it. first two for yeah. me, the best they ever did. The first yeah. first two to King of the Ring tournaments, the best they ever did. I, I don't mind tournaments as long as they're not too overbearing. Um, and we've seen how that can go, haven't yeah. we? Yes, definitely. Um, w pay per view in ninety one. Um, oh, it's I not. Mean, yeah. So they do Queen of the Ring now. Yeah, they do. Wow, King and Queen of the Ring. But I mean, there's a lot more female wrestlers than there was back in ninety four, where it was just Alondra Blaze versus Paul Nakano or Bertha Faye. I hey, so, tell you what, they, they were they were amazing matches. They were, yeah, yeah, I get that. Um, there wasn't exactly a division, but yeah, they, those Ball and um, yeah, plays matches were all brilliant, especially yeah. the SummerSlam one. Yeah, yeah, and Ball is a Hall of Famer now as well. So, 
well deserved. Yeah. Yeah, well deserved. But um Queen yeah. of the Ring, I, I expect a different kind of tournament. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. With a beauty pageant or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just, uh, it's a different game now. There's a lot of a lot of talent out there. Ha- had it been in like uh, 2002 to 2006, then that could have been a beauty pageant because Vince loved his good looking women and that's probably what they would have done. But yeah. Up his street. Well, that's what I, what I have a lot of people's streets. It is, to be fair. But I mean, yeah, that's how they were. I can imagine how... him doing that though, just making it so tacky and. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you can well imagine him doing something like that even now. <laughs> probably the best. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, but I mean, like, he's not involved in it anymore. But sure, I mean, if and the tournament gets to eat my sh- sh- shorts, yeah, yeah, eat my shorts. God damn, pal, what a save! <laughs> oh, oh wow! I mean, <laughs> what a way to end the show. <laughs> that was King of the Ring '94, folks. <laughs> Thank you, and good night. Yeah. Oh wow. I'd say, uh, do you, do you? I'm still struggling with that whole thing. Do you, do you believe it, or, or I don't know what to think. I don't know. I mean, again, it's like until it gets solved in court, and you just don't, you don't know who to believe. I mean, it just sounds like something out of a film that's been made up, or a story that's been written. And that's just the thing like, I struggle with. It is so extraordinary. Yeah, it is hard to believe it. I mean, he is conspicuous by his absence in this pay-per-view. So, as I said, Vince is not on commentary here. And it is strange not having him around in this pay-per-view. I think I would have preferred him to Art Donovan. <laughs> True. And I think from what Bruce has said about listening to like his story of this, is like Vince was not happy with how the pay-per-view no. went <laughs> and how the commentary went. He was like, what the hell was that? And he's like, well, you know, we did the best we could. You weren't here, Vince. <laughs> That's that was a shit. Quick so shout nice. out. So, um, Bruce Pritchard, I've heard him talk about this in the past that um, Ricky um, Madlock from Blackfoot, <laughs> lead singer, down yeah. the street doing some other gig and they find out about it and they managed to pull him in there and sing the national anthem, which was great. I, I thought that was a great way to open the show. Yes. Yeah, I, I had no idea he who was he cool. was. He was cool, but I had no idea who he was. But same. He did, her. Good, oh, did a good job. Black, black. Yeah. So, ah, man. Well, is there anything else you want to add about King of the Night 4 that we hadn't covered? Well, we, we talked a little bit about the Piper match, but there's there's not much more to add other than it was... <sighs> um, it was awful. It was a spectacular disappointment, wasn't it? It was. I just thought they had no heat in the ring together as opponents. So just like there was, yeah, you had to have like a chemistry together. And I think on the mic, they were good, you know, slinging insults at each other. But when they got in the ring, it was like a different world of, I don't know. I mean, Piper. Piper, say, years ago before he died, um, he really wanted someone that would dig a bit deeper than Barry Lawler did. Now, um, I'm not quite sure who's to blame, but I, I think there's there's overselling of the time off that he'd had. And as yeah. I say, like he was some geriatric and all his joints had seized up and he couldn't go. And, you know, <laughs> the, the finish of the match is just fucking awful. That pin yeah. for, and the referee just just prolongs the agony by taking forever to count three. And it's just terrible, <laughs> really terrible to watch. Yeah, and I think uh, Jerry Lawler's Vince already must have been pissed at the end of the show as well. Because yes, yes. says something like, "Oh, thanks for joining us, folks. Happy Father's Day. Join us next year for another King of the Ring." Uh, you can imagine Vince really pissed off because they go off air at that point. He'd be like, "What about SummerSlam? You were hit. <laughs> for God's sakes, you got to tell them. We got to put asses on seats." We gotta sell pay per views. Tell them we got SummerSlam. God damn. <laughs> I mean, I can imagine that happening. Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> I'd imagine Gorilla just was like, I want to get this show over with. I'm just going to say whatever I want to end it. <laughs> what do you want him to do? Tune out for a whole fucking year and come back to King of the Ring next year? God damn. Uh, we all know what King of the Ring 95 is going to turn out to be an even bigger shit show than this one. Uh, 
<laughs> which well, is we'll a podcast on that. It'll be punishment for shoplifting. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's not going to be next week's show. I, I, you know, I don't know what next week's show is going to be um, because we haven't discussed our next couple of episodes. But um, do, do, you have any, do, you, do you have any thoughts on what they could be next couple of episodes? Mm, well, uh, let's see. We could do oh, so many. Th- we could Chris. do, oh, I don't know. <laughs> SummerSlam 94, SummerSlam 90. Oh. Oh. That could be a good one. SummerSlam 90 was a good one, yeah. Mm. SummerSlam 90 will be our next episode then. We'll, we'll do that one. And then our next, the show after that will be, uh, I don't know. Should we do another uh, WCW? Uh, ah, let's see. Is there anything you want to do? Anything in particular? I mean, there's loads of sh- loads of stuff I'd like to do. Um, maybe something from the eighties. Um, hey, yeah, I got, cause... I got a good one. Yeah, it's a WCW one if you want to. Okay. Um, Shy Town Heat, Starcade eighty seven. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I've I have seen it because you I know you had it on VHS and it's on the network as well. So yeah, we can we can do. Starcade 87. So Excellent. that's right. I don't think I've got that anymore. I don't know what I did with it, but uh, I bought it from a VHS um, bargain bin in a video yeah. store in 2006 that was about to close down. It was in New Zealand. Yes. And it was slightly faded and it was, I think it would have cost about $3, which is about yeah. £1.50 in sterling. And I can remember thinking, oh my God, like that's so rare. Yes. I think it was going at that time, it would have been going for about 20 or 30 quid on eBay. And I was just like, oh my God, this is a gem. They didn't <laughs> sure. know what they had. So no. I no, I remember. I remember you lending it to me. I was like, wow. That's the first time I'd seen it. So it was like, again, I was always interested to see older wrestling. So yeah, that, that's an interesting event to cover. It's a scaffold match, I think, as well, <laughs> which is yep. uh, Skywalker. interesting. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So our next episode will be SummerSlam 1990. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's the King of the Ring done for another episode. So we hope you enjoyed listening and reminiscing about 94 King of the Ring. Anything you want to say, Art, before we uh, leave? Oh, I should just apologise now for everything I've said. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we should catch you on the next episode. So uh, yeah, take care. <laughs>